All right, so I'm highly suspicious of Coltrane, Martino, Parker, Gillespie, Bud Powell, all these guys. Why am I suspicious of them? Well, first of all, we got John Coltrane. The guy was a heroin addict, um, yet he was able to come up with giant steps. And if you listen to the solo on Mr. PC, this guy blows through the changes like it's no big deal. Parker, same thing, big heroin addict. And the guy blows through Donna Lee like it's nobody's business. Now, I've been studying jazz for about 25 years, maybe 30 years now. And the first 20 years of me studying jazz, learning from books, taking lessons, practicing every day, you know, doing the eight hour a day kind of thing. And it just didn't work out. I would sit there and improvise or be at a jam se session and I could do like blue bossa or, you know, maybe autumn leaves or whatever. But a lot of these solos were um, kind of like premeditated. I was playing all these patterns that I knew and it just didn't sound very musical. So then... I got into uh, harmony and chord construction. So I came up with this method based on a very simple mathematical principle. And I published scales, modes, and chord construction back in 2012. Now, this, this book, which is out of print, by the way, teaches you how to construct or come up with any chord without having to memorize any patterns. So there's like two or three, maybe four different formulas that'll help you create any chord from, a, you know, whether you're looking at a chord chart or, or whatever. So, okay, I could play any chord. I could come up with uh, chord progressions. I could write songs, but I still couldn't improvise or not at least improvise as good as I wanted to. So then I really got into Pat Martino around the same time. I think when I started uh, working on the book was like 2007, maybe 2008. And um, I was a big fan of Parker and Gillespie, Dizzy Gillespie. And I became aware of uh, Pat Martino, right? Everybody knows this guy. He's uh, he's uh, one of the fastest cats ever. Well, then I found out the guy had a stroke and he had total memory loss. Okay, so that happened. He started playing when he was like 15 and it happened around 30. I don't know the actual dates. It doesn't matter. Uh, you can look it up. So anyway, the guy has a stroke. He takes a break for four or five years, whatever the time, and he finds a guitar, or so the story goes, he finds a guitar underneath his uh, his bed, and he asks his dad, and he's like, oh, by the way, you're a famous guitar player. So the guy picks up the guitar and relearns to play. And there's a few records he's done after his recovery, and it's really interesting that the guy was able to regain all that jazz language and, and those chops he had 
And that just made me even more suspicious. I'm like, there's got to be something to this this whole jazz and this whole bebop thing. So I started thinking about it. And I'm like, well, if I was able to create all these chords and learn all this harmony based on a mathematical principle, which is, by the way, a very simple mathematical principle, I could probably figure out a way to solo all, all over these changes like Donnelly or autumn leaves or whatever the standard without having to memorize every single scale for every single chord because let's face it there's just no way anybody can play the right scale for the chord when you're playing uh, 250 bpm it just i mean it just doesn't work that way i mean you can you know you could go to music school and they could teach you for a d minor seven play this and for for a C7, play a mixo, whatever. I just, I'm not smart enough. So, if you read my book, you'll see that I'm about shortcuts. I'm not interested in learning a lot of patterns. I just want to learn like two formulas and go off of that. So, Eventually, the more I got into it, um, I took some lessons with a, with, a, with a guitar player, a lady up in uh, New York City. And these were, you know, Skype lessons, whatever. And it opened up my, my thinking or my reasoning about jazz. So the more I got into it, I started figuring out a certain pattern. I noticed a pattern. And I noticed there was a little formula. Now, I was already suspicious of this because obviously when you have a guy like Coltrane, Parker, and Martino that lost his memory and, and he regained his his ability to solo or improvise. Uh, and then the more I studied this, the more I realized there was a trick to it. And nobody was telling us. Nobody was teaching this nobody was talking about it there was a handful of people throughout the world that would that would uh, comment on this so then I started working it out I started working it out mathematically and again it's a very simple mathematical principle I'm not a I'm not a, a math whiz or anything and then it just it just hit me now I came up with this pattern or this this uh, formula that works for any song, any chord progression, with the exception of a handful of tunes. So if you if you show up to the, to a jazz gig and you get the the real book, whatever, you're going to be able to play 90% of these tunes or these uh, these charts without having to think about the chord changes. So when I show up to a jam session, I don't memorize any of this stuff. So I'll look at the book and they call a song, like any song, uh, Autumn Leaves or whatever, even though we got that one kind of memorized, but there's some odd tunes that they call. And I just look at the, uh, the key signature and based on the key signature, I know what the formula is. And I just stick to that formula. So that formula gives me three substitutions and three arpeggios, and it gives me a, uh, some alterations. And I'll get into that later, but the point I'm trying to make is that this whole jazz improv thing is not hard at all. Anybody can learn it. And I made a, a, a promise to myself that I was going to teach it to everybody. Before I was just doing private lessons, but I realized that not everybody can afford private lessons. So we, we decided to do this, even though we're not making any money, the reason we're doing it, especially nowadays with YouTube not, not paying uh, creators and all that stuff that's got to do with money, we're doing it because it's the right thing to do. So I've taught guys that, that are going to music school and they're, they're trying to get their, their degree in music. And I show them this method, and it just it, it bypasses all the stuff that they've been learning in school. 
I could sit here and I could talk about it for another 20 minutes, another two hours. Um, but I wa what I want to do is I want to show you how it's done. So in the next couple of weeks, we're going to be having some free lessons where I'm going to teach you exactly how this works. Now, there's one disclosure, though. This does not work for giant steps. So for giant steps, there's a whole different formula. And I'm sure everybody's going to be like, well, if it doesn't work for giant step, then it's not giant steps. It's not, a, it's not an absolute system. But the reality is that it works for about 95% of the tunes out there. So stay tuned. I promise I will teach you how to play this stuff. And we'll see you on the next episode. Cheers.